having an RPG with one random enemy, not the most challenging, not normally what we look for when, you know, playing a role in a role playing game. What we'll need then is a way for more enemies to attack, to come upon us. For that, I'm going to use a spawner. It's a staple in many traditional RPGs. My spawner will be a statue. You can choose one of the many statues or another item. And then we're going to have the enemy spawn at a regular interval near that. What gets really cool is this is also going to be the entrance to the next level. Well, if we're lucky. All right, let's get going. Here we are back in Unity and having the enemies and their slimy blood set up and ready to rock from uh, last time. Oh, by the way, all the assets, all the code is in the description. If you're missing some of this, refer to the previous videos. I first want to tackle the blood. I want to make sure it stays uh, in place and isn't able to be interacted with once the enemy dies. And then let's go ahead and work on some of our spawners. I might actually want to keep that blood around a bit longer. So that's easy enough to switch up. Maybe I'll do one five here. And then I also might want to get rid of the uh, sprite render of the child, or I could even destroy the child early. We could move this up here, and that way it doesn't show the top layer of blood. I'm going to do an X, and so collider is going to be false, and let's just get rid of the child's blood so it doesn't do that dual layer. Boom. Pretty cool. So now we're going to want to set up so we can have more than one enemy to make it a real battle. But first, let's add experience for killing an enemy. And I'm just going to make this a flat 100. So I'm going to do a public for this. We're going to need an int for experience. And we're going to set experience equal to experience plus the amount gained. And then what we'll want to do is change the experience text on the screen, this one. And so we're going to want a public to grab the experience text. Maybe we'll put it with this. I'm just going to copy and the XP text. And just like this. And we need to make it to string. And then we just want to call this within the enemy death. So right in here, if the enemy has died, let's go ahead and say and I'm going to do 100. Let's save all this and test. So whoop. let's go ahead, take a look at player and we need to add that experience text. Experience note. There we are. And experience. 100 points. Ah! Woohoo! All right. And so we have enemy death. We have game over. We could also have the player stop moving or something like that. We can add that type of event in later. We could even destroy the player or we could reset experience to zero. There's a lot of options, but I think displaying game over gets the point across for now. Let's work on an army of zombies. Ooh. And for that, keep in mind, we already have all this script for the enemy, so we can use a prefab. So we have all of the enemies kind of already set up and ready to go. And to get this script for all of our enemies, to get all of those enemies, we're going to need a spawn point for them to create our evil zombie horde. <laughs> we have a few options within our game for that. So make sure, do, 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 do. am I in? Oh no, I'm not in play mode. Great. So we have statues, which is what I was going to use. Uh, sprites, dungeon, dungeon, statues. But you could also take a look at traps and they're kind of neat as well. You might want to use one of them as a spawn point but I will be using a statue. And then we're going to have the hero or the player attack a statue, and that would kill the spawn point, of course. 
And that will also be the entry point to another level. There will be something like a staircase underneath. I was really liking this dragony looking thing. And so that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to pull it out. It will be a sprite. <laughs> Look how small it is. I am going to call it a uh, spawner. Spawner. And then definitely need to scale this up. Mm. 3.5, 3.5 it is. I'm going to put my spawner. Oh, I'm in game mode, of course. Up and over here somewhere. That's looking good to me. And then I'm gonna want I'm gonna want a few things for this spawner. We're going to have a script, but we're also gonna need a box collider. And then we're gonna need a rigid body. And we're going to need a script, but we're also going to need two spawn points. So for those spawn points, I'm going to create an empty. And I'm just going to call this spawn point one. I'm going to move it up over here. And it really is just going to be used to allow us to have an exact location to spawn our enemies. Now, if you wanted to have one of the uh, traps attached to it or trap doors or something like that, you could, but I'm just going to use it as is. Now I'm going to need a second one of these, duplicate, and these don't have to be exactly the same. Again, they're just going to be spawning. It's where the zombie will spawn. Blah. And so now with two spawn points ready to rock and our spawner, let's go ahead and make a spawn script, which I'll creatively name spawner script. We are, and let's get organized. Open this up. Aha, time for the coding. So we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need enemies to be prefabs to be able to spawn them. So let's head over actually and grab that real quick. Here's our enemy. We have our enemy all set up nicely. So we can go ahead and head to assets and create a prefab folder. Dive into it. And grab my enemy and drop in. Boom. Now I do want to make sure to rename my enemy so I don't get confused on this. So I'm just going to call it enemy prefab. There we are. So now back to our script. Let's go ahead. I'm going to give it a comment. enemy prefab, and then we're also going to want the spawn points. Let's make that into an array. And we'll need a timer to make sure we know how often we're spawning enemies. A spawn index is going to be used to pick where to spawn them. The statue, again, will have a certain amount of health. It will need a death sprite and then the gateway that leads to the next level. All right, and let's save all this. And we can go ahead and choose these. Just get them set up so we can get an idea of what we're dealing with. And here we are. So spawn points that we can handle right away. We have two element one, element two. Those are two spawn points. Uh, enemy prefab. We want to make sure to grab this guy, drop it here. Five health is good. And I just made that public just so we can see it for now. It could, of course, be private. Death sprite. Now that's up to you, of course. Um, I was going to do uh, fire. Just make sure it's a sprite. Ooh, I like this fire orb. So, and then gateway. Let's dive into dungeon. 
and I was going to do a set of stairs. Ooh, I'm liking this one. And that will be my game. Okay, so with that in place, first for the start feature, we're going to want to create an enemy. We're going to want to spawn an enemy. And to do that, we need to use instantiate. So I'm going to get some of this code in here and explain it after. So what we're doing here is instantiate the enemy prefab, so that enemy we have, which spawn point, and so this one would be index zero, this would be index one, so we could even have more spawn points. Um, we're using the spawn point transform position, so create the enemy exactly there. And then this is just for rotation, we just want it not uh, the enemy not to be rotated. And then we're gonna create a second enemy on this spawn point. Keep in mind, the enemies are randomly assigned to Sprite now, so they're more than likely we'll have two different zombies showing up. Now, timer is gonna be equal to time dot time plus five. So what I'll use this to do is how often I want the next enemy to spawn. So I could play with this. I could set it as a value at the top if I want it to be standardized, because we're also going to need this time with an update itself. So maybe not five, maybe I want seven. Okay. And now let's go ahead and spawn other enemies. And this is going to be what's happening regularly based on the time. So I'll get this in here and explain. I'll need another instantiate, so I'm just gonna copy and paste. All right, and so what's happening here now, this I'm just putting on multiple lines so we can see it. It's the same idea as this. Instantiate the enemy prefab, spawn index, modulus operator two. And what that is always going to be is zero or one. The reason for that, right? The reason that this is always going to be zero or one. Well, take a look here. Spawn index is going up by one each time. We should definitely start it at zero. And so a modulus operator returns the remainder well, an even number divided by two will never have a remainder, so it will be zero. An odd number, any odd number divided by two will always have one, so a remainder of one. So this just means that we're going to go through the spawn points, right? Each time we're going to flip the spawn point. This time dot time plus seven, we're saying add seven seconds, because time dot time is in seconds, to the current time, and that's going to be our timer. If timer, so time plus seven seconds that we did right here, so this runs the last time we spawn someone. If timer is less than current time, meaning seven seconds have passed, go ahead and do this again. And that should be spawning out our um, enemies. Let me actually put this back now that you've had time to see it. And I can go like this as well, of course, right? But these are the same operation. Let me give it to this. Else we'll need to do now that our enemy is a prefab. Let's head over to enemy sprite real quick. And instead of having this target as being public, public transform, right, target, we are going to go ahead and make this private because it's not going to let us select it for prefabs in the same way. But that is fine because in start now, we can just do target. We can do target.gameObjectFind. It's going to search for something with the name player. And now the target will still be equal to the player's transform. We're just not setting it in inspect. 
And then while we're here, let's do one more tweak. I noticed earlier that the enemy's blood sprite, or I mean death sprite, was still moving a bit. It still had some speed. So let's go ahead and make sure that just like false collision does, it zeroes out this negative, uh, the velocity being pushed, the enemy being pushed back. I'm just going to copy this line. And when the health is less than zero, the enemy is dead. And we are going to make sure that there is no velocity on the enemy. All right, one more time, saving all that. All saved, let's try it. Mm -hmm. And boop. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this guy. And hit play. So let's actually maximize this time. Oh, we need a statue fell, but that's fine. <laughs> die enemy, die, die, die. And I am out of health, but it works! Woo! Oh, and notice they're spawning in the wall, but that's because our statue. Alrighty. So, let's take a look here. Statue. Where's my statue? Ah, yes. Zero. Zero and zero. Massive one is fine. Let's freeze the X rotation. And while we're at it, let's go to our sprite real quick. Okay, so right now, blood... We want to make sure when the enemy is a spot of blood, another sprite would never be under that blood because that doesn't make sense. And so we're just going to adjust the sorting layer when an enemy dies. And this is somewhat straightforward. I'm going to get component sprite render sorting order and set it equal to negative one. And that should take care of that. So what we're going to want to add now is the ability to kill the sprite, uh, the spawner and uh, go through a gateway to a new level. Bum, bum, bum. And now we need a way to stop the spawner to win to move on, right? So to blow it up. So let's head over to our spawn script. And we need to add some well functions. The first one's going to be public. And that's because it will be the take damage function, which you've seen a few times before. And then we're going to add a few functions to use with invoke. And we should have health as an int at the top already declared. So what we have thus far is we're going to say, OK, how much damage are you going to take? We're going to change the sprite's color to actually be red momentarily. And then we are going to check if it is dead. Right. So we're going to need two more uh, functions to use with a vote invoke. And then honestly, the next one is kind of similar. So I'm just going to copy. And then we need invoke up here. And one down here to adjust the color back to the default. And so what is happening? Well, when this gets called, and we're going to call it within the weapon function, so take damage and the amount. Let's go to the weapon, uh, the weapon function, the weapon script. Oh, the weapon collider script, yes. So what we'll do here, I'm going to copy this too, because it will also be pretty similar. We don't care if it's enemy, this is if it is spawner. And if it's spawner, we're going to say same thing, take damage one, uh, except not the enemy script, the spawner script. And let's go back here. So when our sword hits it, we take away that amount of health. We change the color of the statue to red. If the health is zero, what do we do? Well, that means it's dead. We switch to the death sprite for 
um, about half a second, and then we show the gateway, the staircase. Otherwise, well, actually, we invoke the default color back to white. So it just kind of flashes red. And then once the gateway opens, we can have an interaction there as well. Okay, let's make sure, though, that we're going to have to have our spawner labeled as such because we're using the game object compare tag. Okay, let's see. Let's save all this. And let's also go ahead and comment these out so we don't have to deal with enemies while we're trying to test out our stairs and statue. I'm going to hit save on this. Now we're going to need to add a tag for spawner. And oh, I thought I hid. Let's go ahead and make sure. I'm going to hide that enemy as well. And that looks good. Spawner. Oh, thought I did that. Uh, freeze rotation. We don't need the spawner to move around. Great. Now we're going to need to tag it. So untag, new. We want to add a tag. Oh, I already have spawner. But if you don't, you need to hit plus and write in spawner. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that this is switched to that tag. That's looking good. All right, let's go ahead and try. Attack! Wow, wow, wow. Ooh, we need to. Yes, okay. So default layer is a bad idea. We probably don't want HUD, but maybe enemy level. Let's try this again. Boom. And now we have stairs where we could enter our second level. Bum, bum, bum. Or next level. Bum, bum, bum. We can also have multiple spawners. So we could go ahead and make this a prefab and slap one here and here. And it will really randomize the play for the character. Without being said, let's go ahead and make this pre this uh, spawner a prefab. And we can add a game manager script and we'll randomize the location of the entrance to the next level, which is super cool. And we can randomize other stuff as well. So the player won't know which item actually is the entrance to the next level. All right, so let's zoop, zoop, zoop. <laughs> um, and oh, um, play that and assets. So here's our spawner. Let's go into our prefabs and grab it. And just like with the enemy, I'm going to literally write prefab so I don't get mixed up. All right. So with a prefab now, what we can do with our script, I want to randomize what it looks like for starters. And so for that, I'm going to use exactly what I did for enemies here. I can just copy and paste. Copy. Paste. And then we can add our sprites. I'll say four, maybe. I mean, let's make sure there's fights. Definitely not script. Ooh, that one's cool. Sure, I'll do those four. Gosh, there's so many. I kind of think the snail's funny. Okay, so I'll do those six. And now we can randomize statues, right? Just like we did with the enemy. So right here, and I'm gonna do the exact same code. We get a random number, sprite length, and we pop it in there. Yes, we don't need the variable, but it's easier for testing, especially if you're just starting out. And there that is. So now this sprite will be randomized. And then we're also going to want a component that says if it has a staircase or not. So if it is the one with the gateway. And we can have that set up or that assigned by a game manager. So we could either have it be a public variable or a, and what that would be is just public uh, bool is gateway and I would set it equal to false by default and then when we make these prefabs one of them will be assigned to true. Now what we would need to add to make sure the gateway only opens for the prefab that well is the gateway.
Otherwise, it just explodes and disappears. Great, now let's make our game manager script that will help us, well, bring this in. And filling this in is what we will be doing in the next portion of this series. And by that, I mean, finish building out our characters, putting in the information about their stats, adding some ad adding animation, so on and so forth. We have a bit more left to do.